Hi folks, this is Jay. Hope you're okay today. Uh, I'm just going to put uh, a guy's video on about hell. Uh, he's an atheist. What's up? I'm Dusty Smith, and this is the Cult of Dusty. Christianity is, without a doubt, the largest terrorist organization in the entire world. With almost two billion members worldwide, there is not a single terrorist organization in the entire world that has the reach and the resources of Christianity. Now, some of you might be thinking, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? Christianity is not a terrorist organization. Well, really? I was born into the cult of Christianity like most children, and believe me, from the time I was born, I was told every day of my life that if I did not submit to this dogma, I would be tortured every single day for eternity. Are you trying to tell me that that's not terrorism? Fuck that. That is the very goddamn definition of terrorism. When you tell children that if they do not submit to your dogma, they will be tortured forever and ever and ever, that is fucking terrorism. In fact, that's terrorism of the worst kind because you're doing it to children. I was so fucking freaked out when I was a kid. I was so afraid that I was going to do something wrong and end up being tortured forever and ever and ever. Do you people even understand, even in the slightest, how traumatizing this is to the mind of a child? To tell them that they don't follow these certain set of rules, they're going to be tortured forever? That is the very goddamn definition of terrorism. So don't any fucking body try to tell me that Christianity is not a goddamn terrorist organization. So uh, you get a, a bit of Dusty there. Uh, he talks about uh, he didn't have a relationship with his father because he thought his father was going to hell. Uh, first of all... Um, what does the Bible teach about hell? Let's have, just have a look at some verses. In Daniel chapter 12 verse 2 it says, And many of those who sleep in the dust of, of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Daniel 12 2. It says in Matthew chapter 5 verse 22, But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council. And whoever says you fool will be liable to the hell of fire. Matthew 10:28. And do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who cannot destroy, who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Mark chapter 9, verse 44. And if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than the hand with two hands to go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than with two feet to be thrown into hell. Mark chapter 9, 44. Luke chapter 16, 19 to 26. There was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen, who feast, uh, feasted sumptuously every day. At his gate was led a poor man named Lazarus, covered with stores, who desired to be fed with what? fell from the rich man's table moreover even the dogs came and licked his sores the poor man died and was carried by the angels of Abraham's side the rich man also died and was buried in hate being in torment he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus at his side and he called out and he called out father Abraham have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the end of his finger in the water and cool my tongue for I am in anguish in the flame but Abraham said, Child, remember that you are in your lifetime received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner bad things, but now he is comforted here, and you are in anguish, and besides all this between us and you is a great chasm has been fixed, in order that those who would pass from here to you may not be able, and none may cross from there to us. Luke chapter 16, verse 19 to 26. 2 Thessalonians 1 9 they shall suffer the punishment of eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord and for the glory of his might and then there's a passage in Revelations uh, 20 verse 9 and 15 so the Bible uh, teaches uh, the doctrine of hell that we will if we die and we don't believe in Christ we will suffer eternal torment now First of all, uh, Dusty's complaining. Uh, I don't think it's a civilized way, the way he's complaining, calling Christians terrorists. 
I think that's very, very extremely, extremely bad, personally. Secondly, I regret if he's felt any um, psychological damage in his own life because of what Christians have said to him. I'm sorry that he's felt like that or it's affected his life. Thirdly, um, Christians don't say, uh, if you don't trust, um, haha, you're going to burn in hell. What they say is, if you don't believe in Jesus Christ, a hell awaits you. That's where you'll be going, to eternal torment. So in other words, you know, it's your choice. You make that choice, all right? You, you don't have to follow Christ, uh, but if you decide to reject him, then it's not heaven, but it's hell. So the way he talks about Christians teaching children is just not true. Um, nobody can force anybody to accept anything, and no Christian forces people to accept Christianity. We teach Christianity, we share the gospel, but it's up to people freely to accept it or not. And that goes for children as well. Okay? So he's just exaggerating, um, totally exaggerating things there. Uh, fifthly, uh, fourthly, or fifthly, I forget, she was, forget which one, but. Uh, a doctrine of hell is is good for children. It's good for young people. If they know where the barriers are, if they know what right and wrong is, it keeps their conscience in check. If they don't have a doctrine of hell, if they don't have that they will be judged in eternity for their actions, then their conscience will move over into immorality and it will do wrong. But if they know that they will be judged uh, in eternity, they will be think twice before they do things wrong. If we taught the doctrine of hell in schools and universities and colleges, we wouldn't have half the uh, problems that we do with some young people uh, around the world today if the doctrine of hell was taught. It would, it would stop juvenile delinquency in its tracks overnight. There'd be a massive revolution in our nation, in our nations, for the good if the doctrine of hell was taught uh, strongly in universities, colleges and schools. Uh, the next thing as well is at the end of the day the world is not just. Simple as. People get away with crimes, people get away with murders, people get away with things and in this life there is no real justice. People get away with crime, they get away with doing wrong things. The fact of the matter is that the universe is a moral universe and God is on the throne and he will judge. And when he judges, it's a righteous judgment. So I've got no problem with the doctrine of hell. I've struggled with it in the past, but I have no problem because I have no problem with God being the judge. If he's the judge and he's in control, if he sends people to hell, it must be just as far as I'm concerned. Alright? So I have complete confidence in God and in his justice and he is a, a, a God who will judge and therefore justice will be served people will not get away with doing wrong there will be a day of judgment in which God will judge the world in righteousness and it will be a righteous judgment okay so if people go to hell and God does that then as far as I'm concerned God is just and if he does something it will be fine it will be just it will it will be according to his dictate that is right the problem with modern society and modern culture is we just don't realize how great God is. If you get a picture of the Hubble, uh, from the Hubble, and you look at the universe and all the stars, God is upholding those stars with his power. They're only a little drop in the ocean of his greatness. They're only a little tip. The universe is only a little tip of the magnitude and greatness of God. So when we sin against God, we have no idea the horrendous crime that is when we reject God, when we don't believe in Him. We've no idea the stupendous crime that is. That we must warn children and must warn people about the great crime of sin against this God, this holy, majestic God. And it costs God His own blood to sort this crime out at the cross. He sent His Son to die on the cross. It, the fact that He sent Christ, who was God in the flesh, to die on the cross, shows you the seriousness of sin and the need to trust in Christ. So I would say, 
trust in the Lord and flee from the wrath to come and don't go to hell because it's a place for those who've rejected such an awesome and mighty and glorious God. Alright, thank you for listening and take care.